My teacher told me a story one time of uh, a man who was walking with his son in the park. And they're walking together and his son looked at a crow in a tree. And he said, Baba, what's that? It's like a two-year-old kid. Baba said, it's a crow. And he said, Baba, what's that? And he said, it's a crow. Oh, okay. Baba, what's that? It's a crow. Oh, a crow. What's that? It's a crow. It went on for 10 minutes. He asked him 30 times, he counted. That kept a score. And he put it in his little journal. My son, today we were walking in the park, asked me about a crow 30 times. It was the cutest thing in the world. 30 years go by. The son is not two, the son is 32. Son, fa father calls him, son, can I come over? Dad, uh, it's not a good time right now. Son, just, just bear with me. I just need like 10, 15 minutes. That's all I need. Just go for a drive. I need to talk to you about something. Um, whatever. You know what? Okay, fine. So he comes over, gets in the car. They go over, drive over to a park. What's this about, Dad? Can you tell me quickly? I got things to do. Just take a walk with me, son. It's okay. I'll take a walk. I see a crow in a tree. The dad says, son, what's that? Seriously, father? It's a crow. Oh, son. What's that? Is this a game? I have things to do, okay? It's a crow. It's a, you can't see. I just got you new glasses last month. How is this? Why is this happening to me? Dad, why are you so difficult? I don't understand what the problem is. Just tell me what you really want. I'm busy, okay? The dad pulls out his journal. This is, son, um, this is something that happened 30 years ago. We were walking down this park. You saw a crow. And you asked me 30 times. And I gave you a smile every time. You couldn't handle twice. What are we giving our parents? I'm not even bringing Allah into the picture. The fact that Allah mentioned himself and then mentioned his parents is, you think about that. What have they done for us and what have we done for them? What have we done for them? How many parents leave, like their, their children are in ICUs and they stand there and hovering over this little glass box with a baby inside, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, standing in a hospital, not even sitting down, standing in a hospital. Like, eating off, feeding off of like vending machines. And that same kid grows up and doesn't have the time to call. <coughs> that same kid. You know? How many mothers almost died giving birth? Almost died giving birth. And now it's so difficult to respond to her call. Or to just give her a, just a couple of minutes a day. Just let her feel a little important. You know how unfair that is that the, you were the most important thing to them and you're, they are so insignificant to you? How unfair that is? You know? They carry that pain with them every day that I am nothing to my, ch my children. I mean nothing to them. I'm worthless to them. You know, they have no time for me. When something is worth something to you, it gets your time. Most of you at this age, you want to just get away from your parents. You just want to be with your friends. You want to be on, on your own. You just don't want to be with your parents. You know? That's, you, you develop this crooked habit now and it will only get worse over time. Our parents have very, very, very strong emotions. They're very protective of us. For them, you won't know this until you become a parent. For them, it doesn't matter when you turn 60, you're still their baby. They still, they still remember changing your diaper. They still remember feeding you milk. They still remember burping you and cleaning up after you, you know, peed in the back seat. They still remember that. You don't remember that, they remember that. My son won't remember that. I was like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. Then all of a sudden he stops complaining and like, oh. <laughs> Time to roll down the windows. <laughs> you know. Then he starts talking about what, what toy are we going to get for Eid? I'm like, okay, this has not been a good day for the car. 
But when he's graduating college and when one day he's getting married and one day he has his own kid, he's not going to remember that. But guess who'll never forget? I'll never forget. I'll never forget carrying him into a bathroom, cleaning him up, changing his clothes. Abba, put the Spider-Man pajamas on. <laughs> he, won't remember, he won't remember any of that. I will. I will. And that same kid, when he's talking back to me one day, when he's telling me, Dad, I just don't understand you, okay? I don't have time right now. When he does, it's going to hurt, man. It's going to hurt. That's what you do to your parents. That's what I do to my parents. They, we, they were our life. They, were, they gave up their life for us. Our parents gave up careers for us. Our parents gave up vacations for us. Our parents gave up friends for us. You know that? I know that now. I didn't know that then. You, they had their entire life planned until you came along. And then you became their plan. You became everything. And you have the nerve. One thing doesn't go your way. You hear one thing you don't want to hear. You snap back at them. It says, we're not even talking about Islam right now. We're just talking about decency, man. Just decency. What, what have they done for you and what you give them back is so unfair. It is so unfair. My dad's so annoying. My mom's so this. They're so, they're always mad. They're never happy. They're this, they're that. What are you? What about you? I'm telling you, I can't say this enough times. If you don't earn your parents' du'as, nothing good will come of your life. Nothing good will come of your life if they're not happy with you. If you haven't done everything you can to make them happy.